a long overdue update today for a very old video, How to Clean Chicken of the Woods. One of my favorite mushrooms and I had a great year for them last year. So we're going to cover basic trimming, grassy chickens, which I will explain, the greatest chicken of the woods ever, kind of the ideal specimen, and a few different ways to cook. This isn't a cooking video, it's just nuts and bolts of processing. And one of the things that I wanted to really touch on is the tendency that I know I have to harvest too much mushroom because they look so attractive when they're in the woods. And when I say too much mushroom, I mean mushroom that is not tender. So we see them, they look really nice, we cut a big piece off, we leave maybe most of it on the tree, but even so, there's usually a little extra trimming that needs to be done. So I'm gonna take my, take my mushroom here, and again, this is just trimming from the field, and there was even more on here that I left on the tree, you know, assuming that this whole thing is gonna be tender. But as it sits and I feel it again, I can just feel that, you know, I could have cut it a little bit more, a little higher, but it's fine because it's great to have mushroom trim around for stocks and things like that. So I just cut where it feels like I can feel that it's tender here. I can feel this is a little bit more tough. Some of this will come down to a little bit of personal preference. Um, and then for what I'm doing, I'm going to make a quiche for 30 people with these for an event. So then I'm just going to cut like that and put that into my bowl. More here. Uh, we'll do another one. Okay, so this one, this is a good example. This guy, I can already tell this part right here is probably going to have to go. This tender margin here, this is usually going to be your best bet. So I'll just kind of cut around. Boom. Tough part goes into stock. That part is for the quiche. All right, I'll do one more. These little nubbins here, these, you know, these are nice and young, but still, I'm probably going to cut that whole part off. So I guess you could say it's almost like I trim the chickens twice, once in the field and a second time in the kitchen. Okay, grassy chickens. What I mean by a grassy chicken is when usually a lady pours Cincinnatus, a white poured chicken or another one or one growing at the base of a tree grows in a basil rosette form and then it can have grass growing inside of it. That was a tame one. Last year my friend gave me this and it was riddled, completely riddled with grass. And I know a lot of people see these, especially if you're hunting in urban areas or on the edges of woods. So you can eat these if they have grass in them, but as you will see, it is a complete pain to clean them. The first thing I'm gonna do, the only thing I'm gonna do here is really just trim the tender margin, like one, maybe two inches max off of this whole thing. And at first glance, when you're in the woods, this thing, it's gonna look like, oh, this whole thing must be edible. And they're, they're tricky like that. They will, they will trick you. But in reality, the yield that I'm gonna get off of this is maybe a pound out of a six pound mushroom. So that is really not a lot. But every single piece needs to be meticulously cleaned for grass. And then also I'm gonna make sure to look out for any other sorts of debris because rocks can grow inside of polypores as well. The only time I had someone break a crown was because of a rock inside of the base of a hen of the woods. Okay, now the greatest chicken I ever picked. This was last year. Like I said, it was an epic year. And this, to me, they the chickens don't get more perfect than what you're going to see here. So this is five pounds of completely unformed fronds. They're barely forming. And this is a fantastic mushroom. It's super tender, almost too tender for some people, but I think they're just perfect. So if you find one like that, you're going to want to mark that location and go back. 
So I trimmed the base in the field, but now I need to trim the base again. And we really want to do a lot of detail work because there's little piece of, pieces of dirt and things that get stuck in there. You don't want to get a twig in your meal. But generally speaking, this entire thing was edible. The whole thing. So when you compare that with the mushroom you just saw, where I probably got like a 20% yield, this was probably like 90-95%. Just ridiculous. It's been like 8 months and I'm still eating off of this. The whole thing is edible. But the whole thing still needs to be broken into pieces. You can see there's a, a twig there. All that stuff's going to need to get removed. We'll cut it into bite-sized pieces. Yeah, just an epic haul of chickens. I actually cooked some chicken of the woods steaks. They were okay. Definitely not as good as hen of the woods. But yeah, getting a mushroom like that is possible. Okay, freezing is now kind of my go-to with these. I used to pickle a lot of them. So how I do it, I sweat the mushrooms in butter. And then I'm going to seal those into Ziploc bags. And I put individual portions of Ziploc bags into a vacuum bag. And then I vacuum seal that and freeze it. Works like a charm. Uh, quick tip, if you want to add chickens to like a beef stew or something, try sauteing them and putting them on top to show off the color. Also, chickens have a real affinity for lemon. So if you cook them with a little bit of cream, shallot, garlic, and a touch of lemon juice at the end, it will be one of the best pastas you ever had. And of course, buffalo, chicken of the woods, I'm definitely not better than that. Very, very good too. I should have that recipe up in a couple months. And finally, chicken fried chicken of the woods. If you haven't had that, it's probably my favorite recipe for them. It's been on my site for about 10 years. There you go. Thanks for watching and good luck getting those chickens this year.